So people have been requesting for a while for me to feature AMD parts and today I am doing an all AMD PC for you guys that can play Borderlands 2. Welcome back to Tech TechSD, this is Brian coming to you guys today with a special all AMD build. Now this build came about because I found a Phenom X2 4 core CPU in a bargain used PC that was lying around one of the used stores that I picked up for around about $15. And then I also found an AMD engineering sample graphics card, this is an X600 in a junk bin for $20. So those two parts together are going to create one beefy PC and we've got to add in a few extra components but with that being said let's take a look at the parts list then we'll move on to the cleanse and also look at any problems that we come in along the way and then we'll do the benchmarks. So upon getting this case in and looking at it closely, I could see that there was a proprietary power supply. Now, the brand name is Windy, and I've never even heard of them before, but I'm guessing that's why I've never even heard of them before. <laughs> they probably went out of business with this model. Uh, but anyway, we've got here actually a really nice case besides this power supply, though it looks like from first glance, I'm going to have to put in a power supply manually into this case, since it is a very interesting case design, especially for something this old. I mean, it's made of all lightweight aluminium and it can fit a full-sized ATX motherboard inside. So let's take out all the parts and clean it up and test if they work. So now we're pulling this case apart and this is really freaking cool, like windy. Where are you guys nowadays? I mean, minus this proprietary cable, this case is legendary. I mean, some manufacturers could really take some ideas from this. I mean, look at that. It slides out and now I've got easy access to do the build. Now I know why this PC is in the junk section. Let's... <laughs> the cooler's busted. So first up here, we're gonna test the AMD graphics card just to see if it works and we can actually get a signal out of it. Now, I'm not expecting too much here, but uh, hopefully this all works, you know? Okay, come on, hopefully this thing boots up and gives us just a signal to the monitor here. If we can get a signal to the monitor, then we will be home and hosed. Okay, cool. Awesome, so this graphics card is now working, so we're getting a signal to the monitor, which is really awesome news because we can now use this in our build. So we're now going to try and boot this PC up and see if we can get a signal and we just have to hope and pray that the CPU is not bricked because as you saw that completely loose heatsink, you know, if they start it off enough times and you get a, whoa, wow, okay, I am not going to complain about my luck for a long time because that right there is a lot of luck.
so there you have it. You've heard stories about it on the internet, now you're seeing it in the flesh. This is the Zip Tied Down Cooler. After looking at this case more closely, I realized it is just simply one of a kind. I haven't seen a case like this in a long time. So what we're going to do is we're going to utilize this in a build at a later date. I'm thinking like bigger graphics card X99. Okay, so everything is hopefully working now and we're gonna put together this AMD, all AMD PC and it's gonna hopefully kick ass. That's if my zip tie ghetto job didn't break the CPU. So there you have it, the AMD PC was doing really well at both 1080p and 720p, even though Borderlands 2 was a little bit too far ahead for this PC at 1080p, it still managed to play it perfectly fine at 720p. And yes, I have never played Borderlands 2 before, but I'm going to play it from now because it looks like a really fun game and I admittedly didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to benchmark the game to give you guys some figures. However, I did have a lot of fun building this PC and it was actually really interesting when I got into the benchmarks on Cinebench, I noticed that the X4 was scoring like 375 points overclocked. And when I compare that to something like an 860K, at least the benchmarks I'm finding online, this CPU from 2009 is beating, oh, it's a four core from AMD, it's beating a four core from AMD in 2014. But anyway, it doesn't matter, this CPU I got in the background here, the Phenom X2 is a really good CPU on a budget if you can pick it up for cheap. And also the graphics card, a little bit dated, I would have liked to have put in something different, though when I saw an engineering sample, I just had to jump the gun because I've never seen an engineering sample graphics card in my life. So this is awesome to have one available to me. 
and also benchmark and show you guys the figures. And then looking onto the zip tying of that cooler on the motherboard socket, that was probably one of the most dodgiest things I've done in the history of this channel. And it worked and it worked extremely well. I mean, the temperatures were really good. We got a good overclock out of this CPU on a real mediocre motherboard. Like this thing didn't even have a heatsink on the VRM. It's that budget. So I was really happy with the overclock results and especially with the zip tie cooler. I mean, we didn't even get over 45 degrees and the spread was absolutely amazing across all the cores there. So I was really happy with the zip tie job. And I mean, even though it's a last resort, I can highly recommend it. So, and one thing I will say also with the socket is that since it's a PGA socket, that's where the pins are going into the motherboard, I was able to get away with sort of being a bit loose with the pressure. So if you're doing this on an LGA socket, then be very careful because it's a lot more sensitive than a PGA socket in my opinion. Also, one final thing that I'll stress is that a lot of these builds begin with the motherboard. So if you're looking to build a used PC like I'm doing, then just remember that it all begins with the motherboard. And now today I did get really lucky again in that the motherboard worked, also the CPU worked, and even the memory worked in this budget pickup. So I'm looking forward to the day where I actually have problems because I seem to just be getting really lucky as of late. But anyway, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this build, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments about today's build, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. This is the all AMD build, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. I just got this uh, G100S in, and way too much blue on the box. Terrible. Terrible.